Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Amy from Fun Venture. Welcome to the controversial video of 2022. It's that time of the year. My top 10 favorite fountain pens of 2022. And it's going to be a lot of surprises. Hmm, how should I put this? Well, it's sort of a tradition by now in our industry to have such videos in the final days of this year. And I don't know who started it, but anyway, here is my take on it. And what do I want to say first is that this list is going to reflect my personal taste based on my experiences and the fountain pens that I've opened myself up to trying in this uh, previous 12 months, 2022. By no means, I would like to have your opinion and uh, I would like to refresh your memory what was in the list on 2021 in regards of my top 10 favorite fountain pens. A few rules which I've uh, put into place back then when I did that video and uh, what has been changed. Number 10, Etruria Alter Ego Fountain Pen. Number 9, Monte Grappa 1930 Extra Rosso. Number 8, Scribo Field Tsuka. Uh, number 7, Delta Roma Imperiale. Number 6, Nakaya Dorsal Fin V1. Number 5, Old Wind uh, Classic Custom Rodden. Uh, number 4, Visconti Watermark. Number 3, ASC Visconti Arco Bronze Celluloid. Number 2, Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Thunder Exclusive Pen Venture in Celluloid. And number 1, Classic Pens LB5 Tyricu Purple. As for rules, in that 2021 top 10, I used the first uh, rule to have no more than one exclusive pen venture fountain pen on that list and at number two it was to not have more than one pen from a single brand at the second rule let's just say put a question mark maybe i would like to have two fountain pens from the same brand because i would like to go and put up number three as a rule and at number three this list that I will showcase in this video is going to be based more on my taste and use in regards of fountain pens that I've acquired. So for example, I will not go about having fountain pens only for the status and what do I like. No, I would like to make this top 10 2022 video based more on what do I like to use and primarily ink up every single time and reach out and use from my personal fountain pen collection, which numbers a hundred fountain pens. So this time it's going to be different and a whole new list. Some of the pens will not even be here, but I'm going to start first with five honorable mentions in regards of fountain pens that didn't make it to this list. Why they didn't make it? I don't know. I couldn't cram up more than 10 pens on this list and some of them I feel like they are left out and I would like to give them the proper respect that they deserve because they are in my personal fountain pen collection. So in not a single order, I will show them individually. First of all, a pen that I recently acquired, my Sailor Pro Gear King Size Demonstrator Fountain Pen 21 karat gold nib, a broad new nib. I just love Sailor fountain pens and this pen is mm, hits and ticks every single box and it's inked up probably uh, ever since I've got it a few months ago. Moving further, Tatcha Miyabi Empress Winter Breath and this is a beautiful beautiful Urushi work, rotten uh, eggshells, big king of pen nib, 18 karat not 21 karat gold. If you are interested to see this fountain pens in details Wherever there is a video review for such a fountain pen, go down below, you will find the list. I will put every single link there and you can check it out in details, how they are writing, how they are performing, what's my personal opinion regarding them and all of that things. Just speeding up because I want to get to that list. Another fountain pen which recently arrived in my personal fountain pen collection is this Tibaldi in Imperial Celluloid, a jewel of my personal fountain pen collection, which I just don't use as much. And I don't know why. Moving further, we have a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in this beautiful, beautiful celluloid. This is the continuation model of that thunder celluloid, that purple thing which rocked my world when I made it. And this one is the continuation of that collection, only 10 fountain pens. And uh, this is 
in my rotation a lot of times and I love this beautiful color, this rose gold trims, this fresh celluloid. It's just like wild celluloid but it's purple and with gray and uh, it goes so well. It has an eight size nib which is impressive and to the best of my knowledge I believe there is only one remaining which is available for sale on our website and that's it. The collection is done. No more. Last but not least, this fountain pen which it's a shame that didn't make it to the list. This is my Leonardo Urushi Exenza and this is basically it's a more minimalistic Momento Zero Grande without trims, beautiful size 8 gold nib, Akata Minuri on it by Penteo. This is just 13 fountain pens which just sold like this and this is my personal fountain pen which couldn't make it to the list because I do have another Leonardo, spoiler alert, which made it to the list. We should proceed to that top 10. I don't know if it's in a specific order, this uh, top 10, but anyway, take it as you wish, because this is how I see it, how I use the fountain pens, which are on my taste, on my daily use, and which I just simply adore. So we are going to start with number 10. At number 10, a fountain pen which clearly rocked my world, if we can use that term again, and it's my Pilot Custom 823. And uh, this is a demonstrator fountain pen. So this is only available in Japan to the best of my knowledge. I was able with a follower from Instagram to actually get it from Japan together with my uh, Sailor Demonstrator Pro Gear King size. I can tell you that now I understand a lot of our friends from the industry when they say that the Custom 823 is a fountain pen to have. It's going to have a proper video review coming soon and I'm gonna demonstrate every single aspect regarding this fountain pen, what do I think it's such a good option to have, and the gold nib and how it's writing and everything. And uh, yeah, for me it was a revelation and I'm super happy that I was able to get one myself. Let's proceed to number nine on the list and this is unexpected. This is the number nine entry. My Onoto Spitfire. And this is a fountain pen which made it to my collection uh, in a very beautiful story because I wanted to test one and I talked to someone at Onoto and they sent me for review such a fountain pen and uh, once I finish up with it, I said, I wanna have it. And uh, I asked for a different number and they sent me number 89. Ever since then, it's a love story. Not to mention that this fountain pen was adjusted by Joe Soroka at the London Pen Show and now it's writing exactly how I want it because I wanted to have a much more finer nib and they don't offer a finer nib so it was ground into an extra fine by him and it's just unbelievable nice. It's writing with a piece of history whenever I use it because it's made out of a plane, a Spitfire plane, electric it's it's sparkly i i love this fountain pen so this is number nine let's move further and uh, we have something which was on the previous year list it's my visconti watermark again made it to that list the watermark remains one of my favorite fountain pens i don't know why i don't know how but i love this fountain pen it's made from sterling silver it's plated with palladium it has that 1.3 millimeter palladium dream touch nib it's a wonderful writer i love every single aspect about it i would like to change this nib to an extra fine 23 karat palladium um, maybe i want to do a swap with a different uh, fountain pen from my collection and put an extra fine nib so i can use it more often it remains my favorite visconti of all time and uh, it's at number Eight. Now just try to imagine what's going to come next because we are at number eight on the list and already we have a fountain pen which was in the previous year at number four on the list. So it's going to be wild to say so. At number seven we have my Conid King Size Bulk Filler. This is one of the most cheeky fountain pens of this year which I was able to get and also once I got it I found out that they are resuming production and this is good because it's another chance for you out there to get one. Although they, as soon as they announced uh, the, the badge for the king size, it was done in a few hours. It was sold out and it's that good. It's an interesting fountain pen which uh, it went through a process which I can call that I 
leonized my Conit to say so because I installed uh, this giant size 8 Leonardo nib 14 karat on the same feeder. It's a showstopper. I just love this fountain pen. It's been inked up ever since. Uh, it's just clean right now for this video, but it's gonna be inked up very soon. If you see me glassing my eyes down, is that I have a list right here and it's in front of me with the fountain pens from previous year and from this year. And I'm trying to just go in between the fountain pens, this list and all of that. And uh, number six. At number six, we have something different. It's from the same company, the same model. Mm, not so much, but again, it's a bump up. And uh, in 2021, at number six on the list, we had the Dorsal Fin V1 Midori Tamenuri, which in 2022, it's been uh, changed to the V2 that I have. And this is my beautiful, beautiful Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2 Kuro Tamenuri, black over uh, red. It's a fountain band which is not as practical as the V1, but it's very impressive and it it just sort of have an aura which attracts me. And uh, what's very interesting regarding this fountain pen is the fact that the more I use it, the more I like it and the more I start to understand it and the, the, the mentality of having one, using one and also uh, showing it up to new people in this hobby and how should I present it as a functional writing instrument, although it's just God smack. It's so beautiful and so unique and abstract and uh, it's, it's, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Number five on the list. Uh, at number five on the list last year, it was the old one. This time gone. No more. But I have another fun pen, which is big, impressive, and also very interesting. Danny Trio Genkai. This thing barely fits in my uh, format and uh, this is how it looks. It's a very, very big and impressive fountain pen which I acquired this year. I just love Rushi fountain pens. You've seen that in the previous year I tried to open myself up to more and more Urushi fountain pens and to actually understand them, collect them, have them, share them with you all. And this is a stunning fountain pen. Stub nib uh, with this impressive uh, motif on it, probably one of the most aesthetic and beautiful nibs which I own. Big, large, impressive and very, very nice. And we move briefly to number four. And number four, it is something which, uh, <laughs> let's just say, uh, turn uh, my views on fountain pens upside down this year. And it's none other than Dynamiki Emperor. This is going to be one of the fountain pens which if you are in this hobby, if you are a collector, if you think you've seen it all and you didn't have in person a Namiki Emperor to test, to own, to have, to use, to experience, I believe you cannot understand fountain pens unless you have one of this or you've seen it or you took it in your hands, maybe you have a chance to ride with it, it's gonna completely change what you think about fountain pens. It's large to the point of being unrealistic big, it writes like a dream. It has a size 50 nib, a collector's dream to say so. Vermilion, red, I don't uh, particularly find the black as attractive as the red. This is just personal taste and regardless of the color, this fountain pen is going to just change your view on fountain pens and uh, it is in a world of its own to say so. Let's move further. Number three on the list. And um, this is where it's a Leonardo. It's not an exclusive to Penventure, but it is a personal fountain pen of mine, which I highly think it's exclusive to myself. It is what do I imagine to be the top best features of a Leonardo fountain pen, which I would like to produce in a series of fountain pens, but is clearly not possible. It's my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in Arco Bronze Celluloid. And it's not your just Arco Celluloid Momento Zero Grande because it comes with a proper nib uh, to say so for such a king worthy status fountain pen. It's been a triple stack size 8 14 karat gold nib. This fountain pen, uh, it is one of one, I believe so right now. I don't know if it's going to be possible for someone to actually go forward, put such an impressive package together. 
to have a size 8 triple stack with two size 6 14 karat gold nibs. Nib is made by Nib Labs Jose. It rides like a dream. It is my answer to that cross point Nagahara nib from the Classic Pants LB5. It is unlikely to be used in daily use uh, properly, but again, if you want to lay down an impressive volume of ink, it's the fountain pen to have, or better said, is the nib to have. Let's move further to number two. At number two, it's a fountain pen, which it's uh, never been on the list in the previous year. It's mine. Omas Grand Paragon in Arco Bronze celluloid. This is a simple fountain pen. It is not as expensive as some of the fountain pens on this list. It's a fountain pen which I don't know why it screams for me every single time that I'm watching my case right there. It's been inked up with so many inks. It's been used. It's been uh, loved, adored, and uh, I'm super proud to have one in my personal fountain pen collection. It's the one with a sterling silver section. Ebonite feeder, a fine point, two-tone nib. It's been in a very good condition. The Arco pattern is aligning and I highly see it as being one of my favorite picks in regards of having a fountain pen, which is both exotic and I can use on a daily basis. And we arrive at number one. At number one is a fountain pen which recently arrived in my personal fountain pen collection and it is i believe at this moment the most expensive fountain pen in my personal fountain pen collection and it's sort of a gift to myself because i've been grinding down for 12 months of work and uh, i am very very proud that i was able to have one because it's a very limited edition which is no longer readily available to say so and i believe it is a work of art which should have a proper space or spot to say so in a collection. Sailor Maki A Battle of Itsukushima and this is a fountain pen which is a grail level fountain pen. Maki A Urushi made by Sailor limited edition 33 fountain pens with a heck of a story behind it because it's inspired by a very very famous uh, battle in feudal Japan and it's been a very very epic story which I cannot wait to uh, share with you in a proper video review for this fountain pen. It's been loved, it's been a grail pen on all levels if you ask me. This is my top fountain pen which I craved for. I was able to put up a huge workload uh, in order to actually pay for such a fountain pen because it has not been hand out for free. It's a very expensive fountain pen. I believe it's around 10,000 euros Novat, somewhere there, I don't know, uh, plus or minus. And uh, it's it's top, it's top. It, the, the, the level of work, the craftsmanship, what it means, the story behind it and everything made it to be my personal fountain pen uh, at number one on this 2022 uh, fountain pen list. Told you, it's gonna be different, it's gonna be a lot of changes, new fountain pens, and it's a different approach based more on practicality, what I use, what I like to collect. It's going to reflect a change in regards of my taste uh, in fountain pens. I have to say that recently I became more aware of uh, different fountain pens and uh, I tried to broaden my horizon to understand more what's uh, going to be more appealing to me. It's not only Italian fountain pens, it's not only a material, it's not only a technique, it's about having uh, a, a sort of mix in between everything to have story, to have good materials, to have craftsmanship, to have a proper nib, uh, and everything must be functional and usable. There are a lot of fountain pens from my personal fountain pen collection which did not make it to this list, but as I told you, this is a personal reflection of what do I like, and it's changing from year to year, from time to time, and uh, you must be open to accept those changes and to share them with the audience, in this case yourself, and I would like to hear and know your opinion in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you just have 
a sort of different approach in regards of collecting fountain pens. What was your list? Uh, how it's your taste developing in regards of collecting fountain pens? That's it for 2022. It's a wrap up. 23 is just around the corner and uh, it's going to be mind blowing. I cannot wait to show you what I'm working on. That being said, thank you so much for spending this time with me on the BMJ YouTube channel. Thank you for your support. I wouldn't be here without your help, with your support, with everything. If you want to support the growth of the BMJ YouTube channel, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you scroll down below, you'll find the links for our website, our social media accounts, phone number, email, anything and everything that you may need if you are looking for your next fountain pen. Also, down below, you'll find the links for uh, video reviews. If we have for the fountain pens, if we don't have, you will have to be subscribed and they will be showcased soon on our channel. I look forward at seeing you in 2023 with the same uh, energy, with the same uh, commitment and passion for writing instruments. As always, I'm your host, Amy from PenVenture. And uh, if you want to see more videos of myself. I'm going to leave you this right here. You can click and enjoy. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.